Los Dias. This is Kai Pacha with the weekly Pele report for October 18th of 2017. Hello, everybody. We had a big storm down here in Costa Rica. As you can see, that tree fell over over there. And it's been a little stormy seas for all of us. Mars opposite Chiron, Virgo to Pisces, squaring Saturn and Black Moon Lilith last week. It's been intense. It's been like surgery. Just think of Mars as the scalpel cutting open the wound of Chiron and Pisces. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, to clean it all out. That's Virgo. Now she's in Libra. Woo, yeah. And we've got a new moon coming up. And it's a big one at 26 degrees, 35 minutes of Libra. It's big because it's in opposition to Uranus. Still over there in Aries, hanging out until next May. We got a little more Uranus and Aries going on. At the same time, you know that Mercury moved into Scorpio. Yeah. And today, it is conjunct Jupiter. So, you know, Mercury is going along. It's going to be trining Neptune on next Monday. Joining together, okay, with Jupiter. And on Sunday, the sun itself goes into Scorpio. So it will be joining Jupiter. But that's not till next week. That's another Pele report. Yeah. Sun moving into Scorpio. Mercury, Jupiter in Scorpio. Libra, you know, is still going on. And here's the big news I think that I really want to talk about today. I think I got to get in the water and move a little bit here. <laughs> At the risk of messing up the report. I am entering the stream to go up a little bit and see what lies up ahead over there. I know YouTube is going to give me, uh, you have a shaky picture here. But anyway, Mars is going into Libra. It's time to come to the peace table, the peace talks. It's time to raise the white flags <laughs> and you know, heal those wounds. It's like we got out of surgery now <laughs> and it's time we're in recovery. <laughs> and, oh, look at this now. It's a confluence. The confluence. You know, for the native indigenous peoples, a confluence is always a sacred place where two become one. And that's what Libra and Scorpio are all about. Wow. This is fantastic. I didn't know this was here. This is all super cool. Um, so yeah, you know, let me uh, let me wrap it up here. I mean, we we still have Saturn in square, okay, to Chiron. That's I'm going to do a whole nother video on that one. But other than that, the Sun goes into Scorpio, Mars goes into Libra. We've got some changing of the signs here. Mercury is in that trine to Neptune. Last but not least, I have to mention, okay, that really Mars is also still in square to Black Moon Lilith today. And Lilith is still in conjunction with Saturn on the galactic center today. So, you know, we really still have a lot to deal with when it comes to deciphering living, expressing the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Let's talk about truth today. Okay, well this could be a pretty short Bailey report because I'm getting eaten alive by these mosquitoes just setting the camera up. <laughs> There's, yeah, Mother Nature is a great teacher. Anyway, what am I talking about? Wow. These are really intense times. And 
I, I think I just want to start out with it's interesting. You know, Saturn is exalted in Libra. Okay, we got this new moon coming in Libra. I could read you the uh, the Sabian symbol for that. Maybe I will a little later on. But I want to start out with this Saturn because Saturn and Lilith on the galactic center. Okay, the galactic center to me is like a transformer, you know, that steps down, you know, the, the galactic universal intelligence coming from, yeah, all that is into our galaxy. It's like a funnel of spiritual enlightenment, you know, coming through into our galaxy and then get stepped down from all the stars in the galaxy and step down from the stars to the planets and all. I mean, so it's, you know, bump, 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 because we couldn't handle the voltage, <laughs> you know, with all these multiple galaxies anyway. And here's Black Moon Lilith sitting on her for 10 days. 10 days, <clears throat> and we're only in the middle of Black Moon Lilith on the galactic center. Wow. Yeah? Because it's bringing up the shadow. It's bringing up all of our shame, everything that we have to be guilty about, every lie that we ever told, every, you know, little white thing or little black thing or, you know, it's just like, all the imperfections, squaring that Mars and Virgo, that scalpel going in to like, you know, straighten us out, straighten us up, get rid of all the, you know, nasty impurities and bacterias and viruses and parasites. It's like, you know what? So it's like opening up and it's revealing. You know, it's like we're all being revealed. You know, it's like surgery. It's like, oh, what's in there? What's really down deep inside? You know, Jupiter goes into Scorpio. Let's go a little deeper into the taboo. You know, I, I, I associate, you know, uh, Virgo more with guilt and Scorpio more with shame. You know, because guilt is kind of coming, you know, from this, you know, internal place of imperfection. Shame is coming from other people okay you know and the judgments and things from society and and all of the deeper you know emotional root chakra stuff you know shame is when you're ashamed of yourself it takes you down you know into the waters of scorpio yeah guilt is a little more i think of a virgo mercury analytical i'm looking at this in a very succinct way but one way or the other Neither one of them are comfortable. <laughs> Neither one of them are what we would call, you know, uh, positive emotions. So, you know, we've all been working with and dealing with opening, discovering, uncovering. And it's really through our shadows are revealed through relationship. The more intimate, okay, the darker the shadows can be revealed. If we don't want to see our shadow, we can stay out of relationship. You know, just like, you know what, I don't want a mirror. I don't want an external observer. Okay, you know, it's like, don't look at it. I don't want to see my dark side. I don't want to see, you know, my work or whatever. I'm going to just like avoid and deny, you know, this whole arena. But right now, like I say, we've got Mercury, Jupiter, Sun, the Moon, Venus and Mars, all happening in Libra and Scorpio. This is where it's opening up, and it's opening up to the truth. And here's what I want to say when it comes to Saturn. Saturn is taking responsibility for the reality I've created, for what I've said, for what I've done, for who I am. I'm owning it. And when we can do that fully, wholly, and completely, that is maturity. That is becoming an authority. That's becoming a leader, a pioneer, like the, like the new moon talks about, yeah? The sculptor engineer, the master, is like owning our stuff, owning our truth, perhaps in the face of, okay, judgment, condemnation, you know, other people pointing fingers or blaming us or whatever, but also, listening. This is also a time to take in and to really hear 
and to put ourselves in other people's shoes and other people's places and feel what our actions have done to them or like what we, the effect that we have on other people can now be bouncing back to us. It's like, oh, you know, I did this and this and this with my Uranus and Aries, okay? And you know, I, it, it felt great for me and I, this is all fine and dandy, but I'm also having an effect on my community, okay? On my personal business relationships on other people. And Libra and Scorpio want to mirror back that we are not living in a void. <laughs> we are not alone in the universe, right? You know, and our actions have, you know, equal and opposite reactions. So, you know, we can be getting a lot of reactions. And these reactions can, like, overwhelm us at times, okay? And like I say, when you, you can be your own Saturn or you can project it. I always feel like, you know, if I get pulled over by the police or something, you know, or if, you know, if there's, you know, an external authority, you know, you know, really, you know, locking me up or calling me down or, you know, I'm in, I'm in trouble with this, that or the other thing. It, it's a reflection that I'm not doing my own Saturn. Okay. I need somebody out there to call me on my shit. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like if we, you know, if we own our own shit and look at our own shit, we don't experience, okay, people placing boundaries around us, wanting to fence us in, wanting to block us off and build walls around, you know, and protect themselves from us because, you know, we're creating healthy boundaries and we're not invading other people's spaces and, and we're not having a negative impact on our communities, on the world, on the environment. I mean, so it's just like, you know, be our own Saturn. And as, you know, as he comes up, you know, to the galactic center with Black Moon Lilith, this is a time of like really seeing, you know, Honesty, dishonesty, integrity, lack of integrity, you know, walking our talk or just, you know, spewing bullshit, whatever. It's just like, boom. So a lot of stuff is like coming up in our face and all I can say is like, it's really healthy. It's really good. And we've had Mars in Virgo for a long time now. <laughs> and it's gonna be nice <laughs> to move into Libra and take a frickin' break. Wave that white flag, like surrender, come to the peace table, you know, you know, come to the counselor, counselee, and it's just like, iron out the differences, make love again, you know, the, let the light shine, <laughs> you know, in our hearts and in our lives and in our relationships. This is really a beautiful, this is a real beautiful awakening time. A new moon in Libra sets the tone for the whole next month. And this whole next month is filled with what? Moon Uranus, okay. Sun Uranus is enlightening. It's awakening. It's liberating. And it's liberating through building bridges, coming into unity and harmony. Like the mantra says, surrendering to love. I've got to read the Sabian symbol for the, you know, for the new moon. I, you know, he says it so much better than I can. Yeah. And, you know, it's an airplane sails high in the clear sky. <laughs> Are you ready? It's a consciousness able to transcend the conflicts and pressures of a personal life. This picture symbolizes the capacity latent in every individual to contemplate the stress of existence in our world of duality from a higher level. I mean, this is Uranus, right? Third eye, Prometheus, Aquarius, non-attached, eagle eye perspective on our personal life, on the world at large, on the news, on family, on everything. This is time to get a really high perspective. 
through the use of his mind, backed by the efforts and struggles of past generations and the cooperation of other men, the individual can gain a new perspective on human problems and reach freedom and peace in a supernal realm of being. It is a stage of transcendent realization. <laughs> We're moving from the third dimension of polarized I, you, me, my, win, lose. Yeah, you know, ego, ego, into the fourth dimension and the fifth dimension, which is us, we, in La Keshe, I am another you. This movement, okay, into this higher dimensional realm of being is possible in the midst of the polarization, the conflict, the duality. It's really, in, in fact, that is the test of mastery, is it not? Yeah, it's not to avoid conflict or relationship or pain. It is to experience all of these and remain <laughs> in that ultimate higher state of acceptance, grace, love, surrender, compassion, forgiveness, all these virtues. And these virtues have existed through all time. Virtue is a very interesting word, concept, idea, reality. Being virtuous. Black Moon Lilith, as the powerful feminine, is calling us to be virtuous. So maybe just think about that. <laughs> Priorities, values, the highest expansive truth that we can possibly be. And this opposition always deals with, oppositions always deal with relationship and partnership. It's like a full moon. It's illumination through being. And there it's also a polarization, being pulled in both directions. But all I can say is, I, I went into it before. Uranus, was the father of Saturn, right? Saturn cut Uranus's balls off, and when they fell into the waters, Venus was born, Aphrodite emerged. And then Saturn took over after castrating his father. And he, okay, was a hard and fast and, you know, Kronos, kind of a nasty kind of a lord, until Jupiter, okay, overthrew Saturn. But what we're looking at here is the sun. The sun. In my book, the sun wins out over all the planetary gods, over all the other mythology. The sun is the star, okay? You know, I mean, maybe the planets even came out of the sun, but the sun is the center it is our truth, our core, our essence, our power, our, the source of life. So when it comes into an opposition with Uranus, Uranus and Aries is kind of more an unconscious, yeah, you know, Aries, you know, immature, new birthing, you know, raw, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, very untamed, very boisterous, brazen, pioneering, initiating, just out of instinct. So Uranus is wanting to rebel against all forms of limitation, of, you know, of boundaries, of holding me back, holding me down, listening to other people, being this, the being that. This is an opportunity with Uranus and Aries 
to raise ourselves up and really master, yeah, really master ourselves, our instincts, our desire nature from a higher state of conscious awareness. And it happens through this new moon in Libra with Jupiter, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Woo! <laughs> I mean, we can have a good time with this. This can be a, like a really good week if you just go, all right. Yeah, and this brings me to the mantra. Yeah, I surrender to love. Just like freaking give it up, man. Oh my God. Yeah. I surrender to love, though super scared. And open my heart to you. Inviting the healing and transformation that only loving can do. Scorpio is about alchemical transformation through osmosis and union. We become more than we could ever be alone by ourselves. It's like, wow. So there are this, this can be a, a real week of sudden unexpected Okay, shots up into ecstasy and that plane flying high, clear in the sky and the third eye opening and aha moments. And it can also be very scary and very unstable and very nerve wracking, you know, if, if we're down in the conflict, in the third dimension, trying to like, you know, not lose. <laughs> I should have a white flag to wave around, man. Oh my God. There's that song with a white flag. My ship goes down or something. Anyway, I'll put, if I find it and remember it, I'll put the link in the notes. <laughs> so yeah, that's enough for today, right? Uh, one more time. I surrender to love those super scared and open my heart to you, inviting the healing and transformation that only loving can do. Namaste. Aloha. So much love. <laughs>